Good day buddies, thanks for having time in playing this content. Which some of you have requested, it's about on how to raise, and start a clean, and safe feeder crickets colony, that's caught from the wild. I hope this will help those who plans to be in the ant keeping, or any other hobby, but doesn't want to spend a single penny on buying feeder insects. And in this video, you'll find out how, to transform wild caught feeders to be as safe as possible, to be consumed by your pets. Anyway, welcome back buddies. And for those new to the channel, you're also, welcome, to, D Colony. In one of our previous video, we use black light in catching queen ants. And along with them, I also caught some wild crickets, which we will be using in this video, to start a feeders colony. We caught about 80 pieces of crickets, but I put them on separate containers few weeks ago. As this was too small for all of them, I put half of them here. And since then, some had died as male use to fights, and also crickets lifespan is quite short. It's only about 6 weeks after becoming an adult and depending on temperature, the hotter the temperature, the shorter their lifespan will be. Let's give them a fresh batch of food. I use chicken feed and some vegetables to hydrate, and nourish them. Anyway, let's collect their eggs, as this one already stayed here for 10 days. And cricket's eggs will hatch in 14 days, so we better take it now, to isolate the baby crickets emerging here soon, we're also giving them a new nest, for them to lay their eggs. We just need a container filled with cocoa peat like this. And a mesh cover that is tight enough, to prevent the crickets in digging, and eating the eggs. Just keep the substrate moist, but not soaking wet. This is just to not dry up the eggs, as simple as that. We can now put it in the wild crickets enclosure, and collect it after 7 to 10 days. And this is the nest we got earlier, like what I've said, it's been there for 10 days, so I'm sure we got a lot of eggs in here. And this is what the crickets eggs look like, we can see some of them here on the side. Some of the first eggs laid here will hatch in a few days. So we're now putting it on a container, and just wait for the nymphs to emerge. Some baby crickets started to emerge. We can now offer them some food, and a slice of potato, or carrot to hydrate them. This seems a little dry so let's moisten it a bit. And after two more days, we got more babies. This tiny cricket's buddies will reach adulthood in two, to three months. Depending on food availability, and temperature. I keep mine in a room temperature, and I think they're just doing fine, but crickets thrive in between 24, to 32 degrees Celsius. And they're best to set on a dark area, to keep them healthy. This baby crickets is the third batch that I harvested buddies. The first, and second batch are already here in this container. A lot of them were hiding on the egg trays. After moving them on a bigger container, we need to put food on every corner, as this babies can easily die from dehydration, looking for food, jumping all over the place. We're also gonna let the third batch to join them here. There's still a lot of crickets that will hatch in the following days, but I think I've got enough of them to breed, to their next generation. Cause this first generation buddies are not yet safe, to feed to our pets. And in order to make them safe as feeders, we need to raise this babies to adulthood, then breed them. Their babies will be the, second generation, and after getting enough second generation babies. Just dispose the first gen. Then repeat the process and raise the second generation for them to be able to produce the third generation. And starting with the third generation of your wild crickets, will be the safe ones to feed to our pets. But what I do is, I go with the fourth gen. 
just to be more safe. And to be able to reach the third, or fourth generation. Aside from feeding, we also need to do a cleaning maintenance. And for more details on how to easily clean a feeder's bin, please refer to this video here in the iCard. Just, be careful not to squeeze, and kill them through the process. We're also gonna replace their old food. After reaching the third generation, we can now breed them all we want, to have a stable crickets colony. To take it to the third gen at least, we will take about 8 to 11 months. But the process will make your pet as safe as possible, as unhealthy, with pesticide, or with parasites, will not likely to survive in multiple generations. It's either your culture will fail, or eliminate them. This is like, cleansing the wild caught feeders through the process. This crickets was actually in the second gen now. So I need one, or two more generations. Anyway, we can also use a test tube setup like this to hydrate them, if ever we ran out of fruits, or vegetables. And after another month, we're now having some adults over here. In a few weeks from now, all of this Grix will reach adulthood. And will be producing the third generation babies. I already have a stable crickets colony, which is some of you know cause it's shown on some of our previous videos. So what I'm going to do, in this new colony's third generation is. I'm gonna mix them with my current culture, to add more genetic diversity in the colony. I'm doing it, every year, or two for the said reason. I hope this video will be able to help you buddies, if ever you plan to catch and raise your own feeder insects from the wild. Especially those who requested for this episode. And before we end this video, I would like to give a shout out to our buddy, and fellow and keeper. Cities Ants, I wish you, and your ant colonies to have a great journey together. I just hope you have learned something from this video guys. Be a genie for the first time by granting my wish in tapping the like and share button, that would help a lot. This is D Colony, saying goodbye, for now, but hoping to see you on my next videos.